Hello, everybody. Braulio Colon, Executive Director with the Florida College Access Network. We're joined by Kim Cook, CEO and President of the National College Attainment Network. Kim, welcome and thank you so much for, for being a part of this conversation. My pleasure. So, you know, we are in the midst of really um, crazy fastful time, right? This is a, such a unique year. There's some changes made. Why did those changes happen? Uh, kind of tee us off there so folks can understand what all the rage is about. The length and complexity of FAFSA for a long time has been in and of itself a barrier to completion. And it's been a long time policy priority of the National College Attainment Network to simplify this form. Everyone loves a simple form. Everyone loves a shorter line in and of itself, but we had some real groundings to our push for FAFSA simplification. And that is just that more students complete the form, get the aid for which they're eligible and leaving money on the table at this point and use that aid to enroll in incomplete college. So that's really what's been driving that for us. Current form has 108 questions and only about 50% of high school seniors complete that before they leave for graduation. So we have a long way to go. We hope simplification gets us there. Yeah, simplification, right? Millions of dollars are left on the table every year in Florida because students who would be eligible for Pell just simply don't apply or they don't apply successfully. So we're really excited about a more simplified form or version coming out. What kind of wins and challenges can we anticipate with the rollout of the new FAFSA? This form will be far simpler. It will have roles-based applications so that each contributor to the FAFSA, the parent of a dependent student or a spouse of a student and the student, each go in and fill out their own information. Aside from the simplicity, there have been changes to the formula so that more students are eligible for these need-based Pell Grants and more students who receive Pell Grants will receive higher awards. The U.S. Department of Education uh, estimates that over 600,000 students will be newly eligible for Pell Grants. And that's a big deal when we're talking a lot about affordability challenges. And a, a major win for us is that the data will come in and the student and the applicant will give consent for the data to come in directly from the Internal Revenue Service. The challenge is this is comprehensive change we all need to learn some new tricks. We need to learn how to fill that out, what the new language is, how to talk to students about it. The good news is that most high school seniors, this will be their FAFSA. They're not going to say, hey, it was different last year. This will be their FAFSA. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that big change takes time. And we're learning this year that it's eating into the time we have which had typically been released in October. And I'm told this year in this cycle only, the 24-25 FAFSA cycle will be out by December 31st. So that gives us three fewer months, particularly to work with students in high schools on their applications, on their FAFSAs, and then later on looking at aid offers and making decisions about fit, match, and affordability. Now that you fully understand where we're headed with the new version, what can you anticipate are policies that are still needed to further improve how federal financial aid is, is implemented and administered. We continue to push for smarter verification for the department to use the data it has to know when they ask a student to verify information, which students are more, most likely to have changes rather than asking many, many students to verify and really having negligible numbers of changes happening as a result of that burdensome process. We are also pushing hard for timely completion data, so we can do targeted outreach to those yet to complete. We've been fortunate to see significant increases in the maximum Pell Grant over these past two years. We are pushing hard to continue those and accelerate those to double the Pell Grant. Currently, only 31% of public institutions are affordable to Pell Grant eligible students. We did some shorthand calculations and we expect that there will be an increase of over $800 million of Pell Grants coming to the state. Can you speak to the significance of this? Yeah, this is historic. So this extraordinary expansion of Pell Grant dollars that battle that affordability gap I was talking about, um, make it possible for so many more students to be able to enroll in and complete college. And supports like Florida Can and your local uh, college access networks will be all the more important to help those students, A, realize those dollars are available, complete the form to leverage those dollars, 
and then help make decisions about the right institutions that support their completion. Absolutely. We're excited about it. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Kim Cook, President and CEO of National College Attainment Network. And again, I'm Braulio Colon with FKN. You guys take care and have a great rest of your, uh, rest of your day. Kim, thank you. My pleasure.